start. Good evening, everybody, for the evaluation this evening of the Citizens' Council about Germany's role in the world. Assessed and, de and deemed good is the heading. And before we make a start, I would ask my colleague Ina Kuhl to give us a few explanations because this event is being held bilingually, so there's simultaneous in, in, uh, interpretation. Yes, from my part, uh, equally welcome and thank you very much for joining this evening. A few bits of light housekeeping. First of all, I would ask that you all turn your uh, microphone off. Should you have a poor connection, I would recommend turning off the video because that tends to improve the quality of the connection. The event is being live streamed on our YouTube channel as well. So again, if you don't want to appear on the live stream, uh, then you might want to turn off your video or uh, take out your name if you don't want it to appear. If you want to contribute, I would ask that you please raise your hand rather than using the chat box because we've got quite a lot of att attendees this evening who are not German speakers, so we would prefer the chat to be used for English speakers. Uh, any uh, questions uh, directly to ask, you can address them to, to either myself or my colleague, Max Friedrich. So I'll, uh, I'll hand back over to you then, Raymond. Yes, thank you very much for those explanations. So to start off with, I'd like to give you a brief overview of how this evening is intended to run. Claude, Claudine Neert is going to start, the, he, uh, a, a member of the, uh, the Council of Mere Demokratie, who's going to give us a brief introduction. Then we will have the evaluation, which is to say the assessment how the Citizens' Council went from a researcher's perspective. Uh, and Otwood Wren is going to present that. He is scientific lead, uh, lead at Potsdam University. After him, we'll hear the leader of, of the Institute for uh, D Democracy at the University of Wuppertal, considering really what's next, what we, where we might go with the ideas from this council, what recommendations might be put to the German Parliament Bundestag. After him, we're going to hear from Professor Tsikov. He, he leads the Institute for Public Administration in Speyer. And he considered whether there are any constitutional concerns and he also considered how these might be resolved. So that's more of a legal opinion. Should citizens' councils be instituted formally? And towards the end, we'll hear from uh, Katalina Liesenberg uh, from um, an NGO called Es geht los, uh, which is concerned with German foreign affairs. And she will uh, summarize what the implications might be for the political future now. We would like to start now with Claudine Meert. Hello, good evening. Don't worry, I'm not go, going to go on extensively. I just wanted to, I wanted to give you a 
brief overview from my perspective. If you compare the project uh, Germany's Road in the World with giving birth, th then we are now really in a situation where a year ago we had the conception, a uh, year ago the idea, uh, idea came into being where we said this is how we can carry out the Citizens Council to the question that you have set. And a few weeks later, the German Parliament, the Bundestag, actually decided, yes, we would like to carry out a Citizens Council on that topic. And we at Mehr Demokratie then went ahead with that and spent nine months uh, uh, really gestating and delivering this project. Today we can effectively hear the doctor's report and how the delivery went and uh, whether the child is viable and has a future. So we're all quite excited because we've all had the opportunity to watch the Citizens Council in action. I to, to hear really what that means in practice, where, who were the participants, what made them even want to take place in the Citizens Council and uh, what worked, what might we want to take into delivery. It, uh, it is a milestone for us in the sense that uh, really this assessment and Mr. Tsikov's assessment uh, as well is significant for us. We only really did it so we could present it to the Bundestag. So we were, uh, would be able to say, look, citizens' councils work, they can give you answers that you wouldn't otherwise get. And if that project uh, delivered for you, perhaps we would like to consider carrying out more citizens' councils in future. So that's really where we are. We've got parliamentary elections in, in the autumn. And I hope that our members of parliament are so impressed by the baby that we're allowed to deliver that, that they say, yes, we're going to embrace that. And no matter who uh, uh, comes in, into government next year, uh, we'll actually continue ahead with that. Thank you very much, Claudine Niet. Mr. Wren, how did the Citizens Council work? Could you? give us a brief insight into the evaluation. Yes, that would be my pleasure, Roman. And I've also got a few slides to present on that as well. Uh, and well, thank you very much for uh, calling that after I'll become a doctor of medicine, assisting in a delivery. But I hope as a social scientist, I can also have some contributions to make. I just wanted to emphasize that we have presented a report which always passed on, uh, on uh, interim results already as the assessment was, was going on. We call that formative evaluation. And that also means that the uh, these formative assessments continue to shape the process. So that hopefully meant that, uh, that uh, initial teasing problems uh, might have been addressed in response to our interim recommendations. Perhaps we can now bring up my slides. Yes, they're coming up now. Thank you very much. Then if we can move on to the next slide straight away. The first question is, of course, who took past? A part who were the citizens that participated most of you know it's a random selection it's like, uh, like a, a, a raffle draw anybody has the opportunity to be drawn uh, but not everybody is drawn so then ultimately of those who have been drawn you then need to make some corrections if certain characteristics are not represented in the way that we know them to be among the general population. So you've got a breakdown here by region and by age group and you can see the blue bars are the citizen council whereas the orange bars 
uh, the German population as a whole. So both in terms of age and in terms of regional backgrounds, we had quite a representative council that represented uh, the Federal Republic of Germany quite well. So if we move on to the next slide, uh, it was less representative in terms of levels of education. So you can see that the participants tended to have higher levels of education. The people with lower levels of educational qualifications tended to be underrepresented. That might be partly because people uh, from that sort of background might uh, feel less able to contribute. Those who did were actually quite satisfied afterwards. So we might need to work on our ways really of engaging with these people. So uh, at the top, you, you see the people who've got no formal qualifications, they were underrepresented, whereas uh, towards the bottom, you, you see, see the people who uh, have a university degree were overrepresented. And if we can come on to the next slide in terms of, of uh, political party supporters, then you can see that there are slightly more supporters for the Green Party than current polling is for the next national elections, uh, whereas the smaller political parties are less representative. But we did find that, uh, that in fact, on the Citizen Council, conservative positions certainly did find their voice. We had quite a good approximation, not precisely statistically representative, but broadly speaking, all, all the main sections of society were represented on that council. Next slide, we can see that the Citizens Council not only made interesting recommendations that were going to be coming to later, that it didn't just uh, uh, in some way uh, offer an addition to parliamentary democracy, but that it was also a space of learning in itself. So what you can see here is the question, were people more uh, engaged with foreign policy before or after? Yes, so the blue is the before, whereas the, the five uh, whereas the orange is after, and you can, uh, and one is the lowest, five is the highest. So you can see that there is a steady increase. So participants very closely engaged with foreign policy uh, and intended to keep doing so. So it is the way of political education as well. Then there was the question, what did you think about it? What was good about it? What was bad about it? I'm not going to take you through all the details because it's just going to drive you insane. I'm very happy to give you more details if you want to ask further. But uh, the one th thing that you see on the right-hand side, that's really the litmus test from uh, our perspective. Uh, if, which is people who were happy with the process but not happy with the outcome. So people who say uh, the outcome is actually not consistent with my own personal opinion but who are nevertheless happy with the way the process went. And again on the scale from one to seven where seven is the most satisfied you can see that even people who were unhappy with the outcomes were very satisfied with the process and that's always a good sign that your process actually went well. Because if somebody isn't happy with the outcome, they tend to be less happy with the process, but if they are still happy with the process that shows that uh, they were able perhaps to express their opinion, even if their opinion was not the one that was ultimately carried. Uh, and overall satisfaction is what you see on the left hand side here. And then on my final slide, I'm going to come to oh, really the key conclusions, which are summarized here in keywords. 
Uh, so the first point here is the uh, great diversity among participants, but it's not technically representative in the statistical sense of the word. But that's very important, I think, because that is a question people do keep asking. So uh, a great deal of diverse, diversity it, it, it means, it means people really from all, all sections, but not necessarily representative. Uh, people treated each other fairly uh, with respect and tolerance. That was something that participants always said that, uh, that, that we felt we treated each other fairly in the respect for the process and we felt that there was a lot of tolerance of one another. The process was also perceived as effective, efficient, professionally managed, and it was also perceived as transparent. Of course, there were aspects that people criticized some things that didn't work. Sometimes there were technological issues. So perhaps not all hosts were entirely up to speed with the technology, but uh, those are really issues of detail and by and large, effectiveness and efficiency were the main points raised. In that sense, the overall opinion about the process was also positive among participants and also among the observers. Uh, coming then to the question of the virtual format, which was new, the fact that it was held entirely online. So again, uh, that was positively received, really. It, it took some getting used to, but people then adjusted and really got their head around that virtual format, were able to accept it. It was also clear that the direct encounter between people could not take place, the face-to-face -face encounter, and that did affect levels of motivation and perhaps also the opportunity to really engage closely with other people. Uh, a broad range of opinions was certainly there. It is possible that some opinions that the majority didn't necessarily share uh, were not emphasized as much as they might have been. Perhaps by the majority. I mean, there, there was a good sense of community, but perhaps, perhaps differing opinions could have been highlighted a little further. The same, I think, goes for the quality of literation, by which I mean the way in which arguments were exchanged. So some people said there was too much panel discussion too many presentations, and it felt a bit like being in school, uh, where you just listen to talks and ask questions, so there's not much debate going on. But there were also quite a few, especially in the smaller group, a few opportunities to engage with each other. Perhaps we could have had even more of that. Uh, the opportunity it is to take further action, uh, really, I've had conversation with the government this morning and there are some quite positive noises that, uh, that uh, this is not the end of it, but perhaps it's premature to uh, draw a final conclusion that, that. And finally, and that's quite significant from our perspective, uh, there's also emphasis on empowerment, so enabling people to uh, become involved in politics, to give them a sense of being part of the political process. So this empowerment really worked. Perhaps uh, the, the engagement, uh, the opportunities for participation could have been even greater. But on the whole, and I've done quite a few evaluations of participation processes. Uh, in this case, it really is the case that the positive outweighs the negative. On the whole, by and large, people perceive this process as enriching, as meaningful, and as fair and as effective, and you can't really ask for it anymore. And that's re really where I'm going to leave, and I'm looking forward to further questions. Uh, 
thank you very much, Arvind. So before we continue, uh, um, I just wanted to raise one point of technology, Johannes. Have we lifted the cap now? Oh, because we've got over 100 people. Yeah. Yes, it is working. Yeah, yes, that's working. So we've increased the limit and up to 300 people can still join us. So that should work now. So anybody who's here can now stay. So anybody can stay and anybody who's on YouTube is now welcome to return if they prefer to. The link is now working and has been opened up. Is Professor Zikov here now? He hasn't quite made it yet. He hasn't well, quite made it yet. Well, perhaps you can give him a call and tell him to. Well, Thank you very much, then. Thank you very much, then. Uh, thanks for that short break. So, thanks for that um, short break. And I do apologise for this. I do apologise for the short interruption. Thank you very much. It's great to have so many people joining in and listening and hope we can uh, solve all the technical problems now. Can you all see my presentation? I think so. Today we're here, we're taking a look back. Claudine has already mentioned it. So we're, we've just given birth and we're looking back at what happened, what's, what is there still to improve? What can we take with us? But we also want to take a look ahead in order to uh, see what we can uh, go, take with us going forward. And it's an important look that we take into the future. At the same time, time uh, we, we um, evaluated the whole uh, process but we've also prepared a handout for the Bundestag and in this handout which I'm going to talk about we are going to focus on four main topic areas so we are assuming that representative and deliberative democracies can work well together. How can we implement them in the institutions? What um, can the participation process look like in the future? And um, how can it be integrated into the Bundestag? So let's start with the first point. So we have Sorry, there is no sound now in the German. So can you hear me again? Can you see my presentation now? I think uh, it's not working right now. Please can you restart your presentation? Okay, I'm sorry, I can't see my own presentation now. It's disappeared. So just give me one second, please bear with me. But actually, it doesn't really matter. I can see that more and more people are joining us, so um, we can give them a chance to arrive. So now perhaps I can make it work.
So we're assuming that deliberative and representative democracies can go well together. They can be, they can accompany each other and complement each other. And I think it is quite timely to have deliberative democracy complement representative democracy because we know that representative democracy is is getting on a little bit. It was instituted in 1949. And of course, that's been quite a long time. We've all grown up as a society through the, we're not in the 50s and 60s of the last centuries anymore, but now we want to take part in politics in a different way. We're better educated. The topics are different and more complex and it makes sense to have a broader debate, but this has not happened, this development in terms of the system, and that has sometimes led to people becoming apathetic with politics, uh -huh. people are not uh -huh. as interested in politics as they should be. The most important thing in this handout is the question of how can we organize this? We are actually expecting to perhaps set up an organizational unit within the Bundestag, perhaps before the election or after, which would be responsible for organizing new citizens' assemblies this could be coordinated or perhaps steered by the Council of Elders, which represents all parties. And in parallel, this organizational unit could maybe make sure that the citizens' assemblies have got the right funds at their disposal and Perhaps they could also make sure that um, this can be passed on to a private organization which is uh, separate from Bundestag and independent. We would like to have an institution which is independent of Bundestag, which is responsible for citizens assembly. It could be a foundation and it could be perhaps the, uh, the, there could be a council within this institution that could be responsible for steering those committees um, and they could have representatives of NGOs, of civil society and others. And at the same time, it, it of course, it has to assure the independence of the implementation of citizens assembly, assemblies from Bundestag. And in the mid medium term, we are expecting Bundestag to be the initiator of such movements. Perhaps if there were, is perhaps a mood in the Bundestag to start a citizens assembly on a particular topic, then it could be passed on or the organization of the assembly could be passed on to this organizational unit. And this can then be organized in the right and appropriate way. We would like to see this process um, institutionalized. We would like to see more citizens assemblies. It's not, there's no obligation to carry them out, but it, would be nice to have them as something that we see more often. And it would also be nice if um, the initiative doesn't just lie with the Bundestag and the government, but also within civil society, uh, similarly to referendums that can be started bottom up. So they can be started by citizens and they could then end up in a citizens assembly. Just uh, to go back on what Ortwin Ren said about uh, the process, I just wanted to pick out the 
the key points about uh, the citizen assemblies of the future. So it is very important, in fact, crucial to have sortition or randomly selected participants. So there should be a, a call amongst uh, the public to take part in uh, in the um, citizens assembly. But what is actually even better is to have um, people randomly selected. Um, because normally people wouldn't really even come up with the idea of participating in such a process. And in this way, by talking to random people and calling up random people, it would make sure that we are, have got a very good representation of society. Because sometimes if there's topics like politics or pan, pan, the pandemic, for example, um, we always expect experts to make uh, decisions, but we would like to see normal people um, express their opinions through a citizens assembly, and this can only be ensured by randomly selecting participants. And we also need topics that are that can be grasped by people that are close to their everyday lives. Uh, this topic was a little bit too abstract to bring out um, con controversial debates because now we can actually, uh, we, I think there is room for improvement here. We also need expert input um, so we could actually work on including experts a little bit more and perhaps in a slightly different way. So how can a citizens assembly be integrated with politics, with the with parliament, with Bundestag? So there's usually a report and assembly. And of course, this should be given the right recognition as a document. It should be a, an important document um, published by the by Parliament. And this, of course, creates transparency. And it can be the basis of perhaps even a discussion in the com committees of Bundestag who can then debate the particular topic amongst themselves on the basis of the evaluation. Sometimes this could even be debated in the plenary session and perhaps one of the citizens could talk about the, the evaluation there. And in the medium term, this could also be formalized, perhaps in the rules of parliament. We have similar processes in referendums um, at the European level, perhaps in the, in the European parliament. Please, can everybody mute themselves? Not you, Hans. So in European referendums, we actually have a binding debate in Parliament and a binding opinion of the Commission on these uh, referendums that come from the population from the public and of course that would be a really positive thing to have that as a bridge between a citizens assembly and Bundestag. Of course in terms of the citizens um, we have seen in the evaluation that one of the participants uh, actually said that I've never been so close as close as this to politics and in fact, um, we really respect politicians now 
it's not only about uh, debating particular topics, but also to actually make decisions. So there's a lot of responsibility involved. So um, I think the, the citizens are very much prepared to take this next step, but um, it would be good to have um, a similar positive mood in the Bundestag as well, perhaps to see it as an enrichment of, of its own work uh, an, or an important um, complement to its own work. So of course, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Hans Lietzmann. Then if we could have Professor Siekhoff. Professor Siekhoff, we asked you, what is the legal situation here? Because some of the things could be politically desirable, but perhaps legally problematic. But what, what is the legal view? What, what can you tell us here? So I would actually take a little bit of a broader view here. This is all about the fact that in Germany, we have got a very legalistic argument, culture of argumentation, so, but sometimes um, we uh, try to dress our political arguments in legal arguments. We sometimes say, oh no, the constitution doesn't allow for this. And so this is actually a good idea to perhaps take a look at the law and what is actually um, allowed within the basic law or the constitution. I would like to follow on from, from, my pre, from the previous speaker. Um, so our constitution is actually more than 50 years old, but it's not actually so much of a question of the age of the law, but of its interpretation. And I have actually looked at three forms of initiating citizens assemblies so this uh, citizens assembly was actually initiated by parliament. Secondly, it could be initiated by the government, the federal government in this case. And thirdly, perhaps classically in direct democracy, this would be initiated by the public themselves. Just as a quick summary, uh, I would perhaps not talk about governmental initiation, but uh, initiation by parliament and uh, the citizens themselves. So if you just want to see it in a nutshell, there are actually two important points that need to be considered here. So first of all, in Germany, we have a representative democracy. So a citizen's assembly must not, um, take away any uh, privileges from the um, representative democracy. There are certain roles, people have certain responsibilities and uh, rights and they have they are constitutionally um, given and this must not be um, destabilized by the citizens assembly so within these uh, given terms it is actually um, okay there are no concerns about citizens assemblies whether they're initiated by the public or by parliament so constitutionally, they're, they're, they, they are okay. But one thing we need to be aware of is that uh, threshold. So at the mo moment, they're usually um, set up ad hoc about particular topics, Germany's role in the world, for example. But if this is to be perpetuated um, which is one of the uh, features of deliberative democracy, 
then I think that's a new, so slightly new quality. So the question about the legal basis is given then. So, and one of the limits which we cannot cross is so nobody can guarantee a citizens assembly that the results will have any validity for parliament they we nobody can guarantee that any of the results will end up being law or will end up uh, being approved by parliament so a citizens assembly will always be a, a complement maybe a, a functional element uh, but of course um, it's the citizens assembly has to convince by the quality of its work and not by the legal remit of its work but sometimes when a citizens assembly has been initiated by by parliament um, then the, the then parliament could actually perhaps commit itself to uh, talking about the results of the citizens assembly afterwards perhaps not in a plenary session because that's uh, not not in line with the constitution in the plenary sessions um, even uh, foreign heads of state can't speak they're not allowed that's that's not allowed by constitution but there could be a, a committee for example that can hear representatives from the citizens assembly and that that could be uh, something that can be done what is a little bit more difficult is the question of whether Bundestag should commit to give an opinion on the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly. Of course, they can do it. And Bundestag will, of course, uh, give a, a, a report on, on the evaluation of the Citizens' Assembly. So they can, for example, they can say, oh, we have talked about the results of the citizens assembly and we can imagine perhaps uh, doing, uh, hearing the results in a committee session. Uh, but we, we cannot expect Bundestag, for example, to commit to um, explain exactly why they need, why, why they would uh, perhaps approve or disapprove of certain recommendations. So Bundestag cannot be um, held uh, responsible for that. And for reasons of transparency, so the recommendations um, of So the basic questions of how a citizens assembly is set up, how it works, how the participants are chosen. So that there should be some legal guidance on all of this. There are various ways of doing this. For example, um, there could be a, a law or some sort of guideline on this, but I would recommend to institute uh, some general guidelines for all citizens assembly in order to make it more transparent. So perhaps another word as well, uh, in terms of initiating citizens assemblies from within the public, we actually called it a citizens assembly initiative 
um, perhaps some, some citizens have the idea of uh, setting up a citizens assembly. There are, of course, two different options. Uh, one, an initiation by civil society. So which perhaps obliges Bundestag to set up a citizen assembly or perhaps gives the option of setting up a citizens assembly. So civil society starts a perhaps is it's quite similar to a petition. Sometimes th these are set up by a certain number of people. So this can actually, both, both options are given. So petitions can be an option or citizens assemblies are an option. And so there should be uh, different legal guidelines for these different matters. It could be laid down in perhaps parliamentary law or we could um, uh, put this into other pet petition related laws. I would also recommend at this point, in order to not overly burden the political process, I would recommend to have a quorum, so a minimum number of supporters for such an initiative. Um, if you look at different fora that are given in Germany within direct democracy, perhaps I would uh, compare this perhaps with refer a referendum because when setting up a citizens assembly, this is not about factual recommendations, it's just about preparation for such decisions. I would probably say perhaps 200,000 signatures could be one a minimum requirement in terms of also what the constitution requires. But in terms of uh, initiatives that lead to citizens assemblies and that um, require Bundestag to set up a, a citizens assembly, I think this is not uh, similar to petitions in that regard. And you also have to think back to referendum because um, even those are uh, talked about in the constitution. And um, we, I think if we go as far as this, then we would have to change cons the constitution as well. And in terms of the numbers of supporters, I would then put a benchmark of a, a, of a petition. And on the other, other hand, it is uh, more of an organizational decision, not a factual decision. And I think then the number of signatories should be somewhere in the region of 500,000. which would then lead to, um, to, to an obligation on the part of Bundestag to set up a citizens assembly. Thank you very much. That's certainly good news. So one thing we've certainly taken, taken away from this is that the parliament, the Bundestag can certainly create and set up citizens council within the limitations that you've outlined. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that can be viewed on the website as well. So now I would like to ask Kate to, to give us a brief summary and perhaps an outlook what's next from a political perspective. Hello and good evening from my side as well. So we've heard a lot already, so I, I'll try to keep it brief to leave some time for questions and answers as well. So there are two points I wanted to touch on. On the one hand, to expand on the report by the Bundestag's research department, which we might see like a further medical report 
but also then to look ahead to say how can we get the baby that uh, that the burger uh, the citizens council currently is uh, all the way to nursery or schools so this citizens council about germany's road road in the world was accompanied by the support staff of the Bundestag who have actually published something on that today. My colleague will be able to put that link in the chat as well now. And really the upshot is that they see that as a deliberative process and recommend it as a way of engaging citizens, as a way of contributing to finding solutions to political issues. So in that sense, again, there is actually support for the format. Uh, this support group has also supported the Citizens Council both uh, at the meetings and in the background in terms of how do you set up the citizen council you heard it took some time to set it up of course it was quite challenging because it had to be online in that sense again the impressions were quite positive on the whole and in particular it's worth noting that the complexity of the issue germany's role in the world contributed to making it less suitable uh, an issue for which a citizens council could really create a recommendation perhaps if the issue was scoped more narrowly so you can have more actionable recommendations but also give them a more manageable topic to work on and in terms of time scales the question of the diversity of participants, I think it's important to look ahead again from our perspective, certainly to consider how do we ensure that that random selection really achieves what achieves what we're trying to achieve, which is to have everybody around the table. So again, there might be ways of improving that. And you've heard it repeatedly now, there is debate, how do we achieve this? How can we achieve it during the next session of parliament? Uh, or as we like to say in Ger Germany, Germany, after the Citizens Council is before the next Citizens Council. So there's currently a Citizens Council in the works for climate change. And again, there's a federal Citizens Council on that. I'm sure there are lots of citizens council at the local level, perhaps you're working with some of these yourself. So we do actually envisage uh, the next parliamentary term to be testing ground, almost a space where we keep trying out different forms of the citizen councils. We've heard a few suggestions from Mr. Eitzman how this might be implemented in the shorter term. What is required from an organizational perspective to make sure you get the expert and the hosting and to make sure that the selection is fair to have a subject matter that perhaps, like I said, isn't quite as complex or is closer to people's lives. So over the coming month, there'll be plenty of opportunity to debate that. The issue is certainly not closed. It's more about to keep growing and there are more likely to be more opportunities to engage with Citizens Council. So really, you have to uh, manage expectations. Everybody needs to be clear. Every participant needs to be clear what can be achieved, what cannot be achieved, what will happen with the results, what will not happen to the results. So in that sense, hopefully the high praise that we've heard today will continue to be leveled on future citizens' councils. Thank you very much, Kate, for this look ahead. And before we move on to questions, 
I actually have a question to all of you because I have seen a few familiar faces here. Who here took part in the Citizens Council on Germany's Germany's role in the world? Would people mind raising their hands so we can uh, have a rough idea? Yes, I can see them there. Hello, hello. Yes, fantastic. Thank you so much. Is there any participant of the Citizens Council on Democracy here as well? Certainly judging by the name, I've seen a few familiar ones without them being visible on video. So if we can move on to the debate, to question and answer. Welcome to raise your hand as a participant now. Who's got a question to the presenters? Or who would like to make a contribution? Ben Schroeder, I can see from here. Mr. Schroeder, good evening. Perhaps if you unmute your microphone. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. What I was a bit surprised by was the fact that I thought the experiences we've had so far with Citizens Council have been fantastic. So well done to all of you. And picking up on what the penultimate presenter said in terms of the concerns, the constitutional concerns, uh, the various reasons why it might not be capable of being implemented. I think what we see at the moment is that uh, from a political perspective, uh, there's actually some interesting work that uh, politicians uh, uh, politics have become a really central issues and we have to understand that if we save our system then we have to consider how do we move the political system in the right direction and taking into consideration the extent to which party politics are almost a failed system because that's all, always about maintaining the powers of political parties. So from my perspective, the Citizens Council offers a great alternative to that. Uh, an alternative to, I hope I'm allowed to say an alternative to this sickly system so that in a context of citizens' councils, you can actually achieve tangible results. Why don't we think more about rethinking completely our democracy because times have changed so much that we need a completely different democracy now. And if we consider what I've heard again now is that during the next parliamentary term, perhaps we'll have another look at it and try to reevaluate things. And I think the clock is ticking here. I think we need to be bold here, take that leap of faith. And I think ultimately what is really important is that our political system is, I'm sorry to say it, but I think we do need to call into question our political system. Our democracy needs an update. And if we resist that, if we refuse to even consider that, if we don't dare to consider that, then I would really think it's a matter of time until uh, things just fall apart around us. We need new solutions. It usually makes sense to start with small steps and I think time really is running out so it's time we took action. Thank you very much. So if possible, I'd like to you alternately uh, uh, call on men and women. So I'd uh, like to call on Krista Markle now. Yes, thank you very much. So I've got three points that I would like to raise, but I was a few minutes late. Perhaps I missed something or more precisely, I couldn't get in. 
at the beginning. So what I would like to know is whether there have been any consideration how citizens councils might be set up at the local level because that's where issues are a lot more tangible. And I think as a starting point and just to practice the format, I think it would be really useful to try it at the local level. The second thing uh, in terms of the makeup, I've read Mrs. Nan's books. Uh, I think she is very clear about the fact that you need a, 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 a needs not representatives uh, uh, of the people but, uh, but a representation of the people so you need to identify sectors and that and that then you need to draw representative from each of those sectors to ensure that all these sectors are actually representatives so uh, I, 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 I think lobbying shouldn't really be an issue there because it should be a reasonably objective process. I'm certainly in favour uh, in terms of the question of whether they can take a decision that might go against uh, the government or, or parliament. I, I would be very much against that because in that case they would no longer be an advisory, advisory council, that would be a parallel system of governance. So I would resist that, but I think politics does need a greater citizen's voice. And I think citizens councils are almost an ingenious way of achieving that because they ha have a f fantastic way of, of uh, of bringing in the citizen's voice because if this is then presented to the public, it, public as well you'd have to have very good reasons not to implement it and then another pivotal issue from my perspective is who supports them because if that if those are uh, parliamentary employees who support them i'm not too sure about that because they are almost committed to their employer again so i think you need support staff who are completely independent of the political apparatus thank you very much okay thank you very much then i'd say and then kumar gets an opportunity to contribute and then we can have a discussion. And, and then, yes, so I participated in the Council on Germany's Road in the World. And I think it's a fantastic way, way of countering political apathy and disengagement, although I can't say I was ever politically disengaged, but certainly for me, it recharged my political batteries. And I would agree with the last two speakers because the discrepancy that they highlighted, I think is a central issue. It's really important to involve people who are uh, even more disengaged from politics than was the case last year and if I look at the evaluation uh, so people who have less formal education tend to be the ones who don't get involved and want to get involved uh, or don't feel able to contribute perhaps it should be it be almost compulsory a bit la like uh, magistrates or that sort of thing so I think that would be an interesting issue from my perspective that we don't seem to be engaging everybody at the moment. Anka and then Kumar. Uh, thank you, uh, Kumar. So from those who've be, uh, been addressed, would somebody like to respond? Okay, perhaps I can respond and perhaps the others can then contribute to that. Yes, so first of all, I, I'm glad to hear the very positive comments that we've heard again about the Citizens Council. If I can start at the end, Mr. Kunat, you emphasised again people with less formal education. I think that was brought up this morning. It's not so much the case that they're not able to, it's more that uh, they don't have the confidence to contribute. And I think we have to get better at uh, 
establishing uh, motivation among these groups so that they they want to contribute and feel able to contribute. I myself have run citizens councils and I've seen that people with less formal education over time come to contribute just as much just as much uh, and that they really are able to think for themselves so it's not an inability it, it's a matter of confidence then in response to Mrs Markle at the local level there is quite a lot going on already so it's not as though uh, that didn't happen there so they might be called things like citizens forums rather than citizens councils for instance that's the more common terminology uh, but this idea of again of uh, really uh, drawing participants from a hat pretty much uh, at the federal level, it's quite uncommon, but at the local level, there's actually plenty of experience from the last two decades. And then finally, perhaps the last point that Mrs. Markle uh, raised, the question uh, of raffle draw. It sounds a bit like anyone can in, and if you can't get in, in, in that's tough luck. No, the point is that everybody has the same opportunity to get involved. I think that's really important in terms of, of legitimacy. You, you can never involve 80 million people. That's just not feasible. So I would like to give everybody the opportunity to be involved. If somebody then says, no, I'd rather not, then that's up to them. Voting isn't compulsory. Uh, uh, being a magistrate isn't compulsory, so I wouldn't make that compulsory as well. But uh, again, then, of, of course, you have to draw the lot again. And in, in that particular situation, uh, it can be uh, uh, be helpful to draw from the those group that uh, need to be sufficiently represented. So, uh, but I, th I think the breadth of backgrounds is a defining feature uh, and the strength of these councils and those who implement them should not be uh, be effectively brought up by lobbyists but i don't think that has been much of an issue in the past but the independence of the citizens council is very important in terms of set, uh, setting them up and the, uh, then I'd like to uh, hand over to anybody else who might want to respond. Katerina wanted to respond. Yes, I can only echo what has been said. I just uh, wanted to respond to the question how it is. Uh, it sounds a little a little strange if I say that as an advocate of a citizens council that really citizens councils are now no panacea either. So if the whole political system is sick, then you cannot say uh, we can treat that. Uh, uh, the solution has to be be that we we offer treatment can be one element of that. There are ways certainly of re-establishing a dialogue between politics and citizens and uh, between different lived experiences, the reality of different citizens, and that ultimately allows a different political culture to be established. But I think that's easier to do if done jointly with other political institutions. Of course, we've seen that in the evaluations and perhaps the participants of the Citizen Council can tell us a little more about that as well. But various members of Parliament have been very happy to take part and to listen to what had already been arrived at, uh, just as the report uh, received a lot of attention. So I think that's, that can be a mutual learning process. 
So this is no alternative to existing institutions because we've already heard that already from a constitutional perspective, citizens counts are no panacea. And I would also echo that at a local level, there's a lot going on. So the political map of Germany has already put been put into the chat. There's a long tradition of that. And this cooperation between local initiatives and federal formats, you could imagine doing it countrywide as well. You can certainly envisage changing the political process in that world. So if somebody says, I've had a letter through the post inviting me to take part in a citizens uh, council. That's a way of engaging people uh, and in particular those who are considered the left behind. Hans, can I ask you a question from the chat? Yes, I've got two questions here from the chat. Yes, that's the, those are the right ones. So what Mr. Schroeder said is quite right. It, this is the update. This is the renewal of the system and renewal of representative democracy. S Citizens Assembly are part of representative democracy. This is part of an update to the to democracy as we know it, i.e. representative democracy. So we have got different formats and this all comes from the local level. Uh, since 1974, we've had these um, randomly selected assemblies at local levels. We've had a great number of different um, initiatives in different cities, but also in, in smaller towns all over Germany. And this has been tried and tested, and then we've uh, done it at regional level at uh, in Bayern, and so on. And that has been proven to be a new way. And I would say that we shouldn't expect to have the whole of society in represented in one of these assemblies. The after our evaluation, those who were less well educated were much more happy with the citizens assembly they were much happier with the discussion and the results they they would have actually perhaps liked a little bit more complexity but actually we saw that those who are less well educated um, are very well integrated into those um, assemblies and we would like to, we have actually got more people with less money, less time, less resources, lower level of education in assemblies than in votes, in, in, in elections. They are much more elitist. And we don't want everything at the same time, but we've made a huge amount of progress in terms of heterogeneity. We have got all different perspectives and we have integrated different walks of life into the assemblies and they have all been able to have a fruitful discussion. And uh, the question of sortition was um, talked about in the chat is actually a random selection. Um, a, a certain um, people are chosen, they're selected, then they're contacted by letter or by telephone. And perhaps somebody um, who says, oh, I can't come, I've got small children, then we can offer them childcare or sometimes some people um, may not be able to speak German well enough, but then we can offer them uh, interpreting services and sometimes if people say oh I can't get uh, time off work then we can talk to their employer for example but there's also a small uh, fee that we can pay people so people are very much encouraged to take part they're almost treated like VIPs 
And then the next question on expert input, it's not just about discussions between the citizens, but it is also, it's about empowerment. So we are educating people in terms of the contents by experts and those experts are selected by independent uh, facilitators and we of course choose experts from all perspectives um, who have different opinions economically or um, ecologically, legally. So there's a broad spectrum of different expert opinions who are invited, then they can give their input and uh, they leave the discussion and then the citizens are uh, left to have their own discussions. And I'm happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you very much, Jan Eike Schönfelder. And then we've got a few other contributions. Perhaps if we could um, keep it quite short in order to talk to as many of you as possible. So um, I also was only able to join a little bit later. So I hope I'm not uh, doubling up here. I'm, I've just, um, I've got three short question. So uh, the lack of uh, the, the topic was too vague, basically, which has already been a point of criticism here. And then, for example, other topics like uh, election uh, organization and law, then perhaps the, my question now is, would, would you have um, perhaps um, like, like to have chosen a more concrete topic, like uh, was the case in Ireland. I think um, 50 citizens were left over from 69 citizens that started the process. So do you have any reasons why some people dropped out? And thirdly, um, do you know um, what, uh, uh, the government and the parliament during this uh, legislation is going to uh, do with the uh, with the results of the citizen assembly. Have we had an answer to this question before? Gabriele, are you here? I think Gabriele put her question into the chat. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't, I had slight technical problems. I just wanted to ask about the legal aspects that were talked about at the beginning. I thought that was quite interesting. I would like to put this in a nutshell. Perhaps we, we've only got 30 minutes left. I have taken part in various uh, political processes, but I've been left frustrated. In principle, citizens' assemblies are a good initiative, but I would also like to say that I would like to wish citizens' assemblies very well, but I'm not sure if in the long term um, this is the right way of updating democracies. I've also taken part in a lot of demonstrations. One of them was TTIP. And I've always found that all these things are ignored by politics. And I'm, I find that very frustrating. I would like to talk in favor of citizen assemblies and strengthening them. I, I think they should be obligatory, uh, an obligatory topic in the Bundestag. I think it would be um, important to have a direct uh, access to the members of parliament 
because of course we want to um, be as transparent as possible and that's one of the main aims and there should be debates we, we mentioned the number of 200,000 because if so many people were part of uh, the citizens assembly then they should be topic in the Bundestag they should be talked about in parliament otherwise this wouldn't be transparent at all then we've got Mr. Reinhardt. Beyond the topic of citizens assembly, we were talking about the format, but I think the efficiency of the format, which I think is important and the right one um, to find solutions, I think we should um, open this up to younger people and this means to all of them so in the phase of socialization churches have always known that then in this stage of development it during puberty it's it is very important um, for young people to get in touch with what's going on around them. And I don't understand why democracy, especially the experience that Germany had during the Nazi time, um, and then why today in an open democracy, when young people are so open towards the world, I think this is um, all about the restructuring of the brain during that uh, developmental stage. And it would be important to create a connection to the system. And when we miss that, then that is something that cannot be made up for later in life. And we've got more and more frustrated uh, citizens, but as long as we don't have a standard of including younger people i've um, said that in a chat as well eric from actually mentioned that in the chat I've, I've put some links in the chat but uh, of course uh, there's not enough time now to, to talk about this in sufficient detail yes thank you mr reinhardt thank you So perhaps Hans Lietzmann and Herr Zikow and Ortwin Renn, please, if you could um, comment on those. And then we've, we're come getting closer to 9 p.m. And then in conclusion, I would ask Claudine, what has happened with the results? That, that, that would be a good question to answer, please. So what uh, in terms of what Mr. Reiner said at the end, there are uh, citizens assemblies for young people. There are participation processes for young, pe young people. So we have also had the question in the chat um, to include people, people from and passport. Yeah, but that's already happening. We um, are inviting anybody who lives in Germany, not people who are necessarily German by uh, birth. We have also been able to recruit homeless people via the homeless shelters. Um, these were people we, we weren't able to reach traditionally, but we have been able to do that. So we would like to include anyone. We start at 14 years of age, sometimes at 16, uh, up to, and there's no upper limit. So it is all about political education and citizens assemblies are very good means of educating people. And I think there is a case for increasing political education in schools as well. But at the moment, the opposite is the case um, that no, there is less and less political education at schools and um, economic education is given preference. But in terms of lobbyism, which was also mentioned, but we are citizens lobby lobbyists. 
And it's, it's an important question to ask whether lobbyism is transparent, but I would like to say lobbyism is also a, is, is to take positive influence. And I think citizens assemblies are represented by citizens who make an important contribution. They give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to politicians. And that is exactly the value of citizens assemblies. And I think that this is where the place is um, within the political structure. Otwin, would you like to add anything? I would like to uh, quickly talk about Mr. Schoenfelder's questions, the, uh, the fact that the topics were too vague. I think uh, citizens' assemblies are especially suited for talking about concrete subjects that are very close to people's lives. Um, we, we don't we need to talk about anything that's uh, that has a great level of consensus we need to talk about controversial topics and uh, the topics need to um, of course fulfill those important criteria and the question of dropouts is probably sometimes people were getting ill sometimes people had too much um, on at work, but I don't think there was anybody here who started and then was got fed up or didn't like it and then dropped out. If you need any further information, you can, of course, uh, contact us separately. Katie, oh no, Mr. Tsikov, um, I think you wanted to uh, add one or two points. Mr. Tsikov, are you here? Uh, I think he may have left. I can't see him. Now perhaps he's been dropped out or he's been... So Claudine, uh, perhaps you would like to uh, give us a conclusion. Oh, I can't replace Mr. Tsikov, but what happens with our results? Mehr Demokratie, we have, um, has now uh, concluded two citizens' assemblies. One was the um, citizens' assembly on democracy, which we have um, taken the results to parliament, who said that they wanted another citizens' assembly on Germany's role in the world. So I don't think there could be a better answer from Parliament. And of course, we were curious what is going to happen to the 32 recommendations that were made by this year's um, Citizen Assembly. In 34 weeks, we've got elections and we would have um, not been surprised if they had other things to talk about, but no, we were surprised to see what talked about in Parliament and the even um, uh, set up commissions and committees on these topics. And they have even invited a couple of uh, representatives from the assembly. And Heiko Maas also invited um, citizens to Zoom meetings about foreign policy and ask them about their opinions. And this is the right way to go because of course citizens assemblies are only successful, successful if politics um, are interested in them. And the more positive results we, we achieve and perhaps when members of parliament see what an enrichment citizens assemblies can be, um, for their own work, or if we can make the formats here a little bit more public, I think we could even uh, have an evening show, show a political uh, program um, to see how citizens um, 
debate and ask questions. And I think that would enrich our democracy. And the more um, positive experiences we have, the more we can de strengthen democracy. Thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you, Mr. Ortwin Wren and to Mr. Lietzmann. Thank you very much for your evaluations and the handouts to Parliament. We hope that in the next Parliament, we will also have plenty more Citizens' Assembly. And this is the, um, the end of our session now. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye. <laughs>